you know, I, I thought our, compared to last night's effort by us, our, just looking at our team, I thought we were a little, a little uh, just smarter and our, our effort was better. You know, I thought last night it was kind of a battle of wills and our, you know, I thought B, like I said after the game, had a little edge on us in a lot of different categories. Tonight I think our, you know, we were just our, that much better than we played last night. You know, whether it was loose pucks or uh, goaltending, uh, special teams, so we were just that much better. But two uh, very evenly matched teams. Tonight was clearly a, a special teams. You know, I think six of the, we had four and B had two. I think six of the seven goals were special team goals. I thought one of our early kills are Gave us a lot of energy. You got the crowd involved in it, and um, then the disallowed goal. You know, we, we, we really couldn't see it from the bench area, so we were prepared either way on it. Uh, but it did not take our, any jump off our game. And sometimes you get a goal early that's disallowed, <clears throat> that kind of affects your emotion. But I thought our kids are. We've talked about our, our leadership from our upper class guys. They did a nice job keeping us going. And, uh, but we feel really good about the uh, the game and uh, the rivalry is second to none, mm -hmm. I think, in college hockey. So both crowds were uh, pretty uh, raucous and loud and uh, filled, and it was a fun atmosphere to play in. You guys talk about the emotions of playing in this game, especially coming off of last night. Was there maybe a little extra jump after uh, after the way things went last night, knowing that there's you know so much at stake? Yeah, I think uh, obviously we didn't get the results that we wanted last night. Um, I think everyone watching, um, especially in our locker room, knew that uh, we didn't play um, you know exactly how we wanted to. We didn't come out as physical as we wanted to, and um, you know I think we played into their hands last night with turnovers in the neutral zone. Um, you know, and, and this morning we kind of said. Um, you know, that, that's unacceptable and we came out tonight and um, I think that the physical, the physical part of our game was there, um, which made it a lot easier for us. Uh, I think we took away a lot of their, their defense, um, their defense's time, um, you know, which caused a lot of turnovers. So I think as a, um, as a team, we, we played a lot better and, um, you know, stuck to our game plan a lot more than we did last night. Um, well, anytime uh, you play BU, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a battle. Um, you know, big rivalry, rivalry, and uh, you gotta, you gotta bring, bring your all. And last night we might not have played the sharpest game of the season, and uh, they outworked us. But uh, coming into the day, we, we, like Coach said, we look to our, to our senior class. Um, they've been there, and, and they led the way tonight. Um, all six guys just getting the guy, the team ready to play, and uh, coming out playing hard, and, and everyone kind of followed them. Your, your unit seemed to get a lot better chances tonight on the power play. What chances were you um, Well, pre preparing during the week, uh, we spent a lot of time on it. And uh, we just, I don't know if we necessarily changed anything tonight, but we we, uh, we were just able to get pucks down the net, which is something uh, the coaches stressed and uh, crash the net and get some dirty, gritty goals. It doesn't have to be tic-tac-toe on the power play. And uh, we were able to do that tonight, and I thought both units were uh, skating and working hard and, and, and just wanted it more. Bill, what does Brendan Silk bring to your line and to the power play? Uh, Silk, he's a, a tremendous player. Um, he's a freshman, but he doesn't play like it. He's confident. He, he'll go out, be gritty anywhere on the ice. He's not afraid of anyone. And uh, that creates space. And, and when you have uh, a guy creating space like that, and you got Kevin Hayes out there, <coughs> when he has space, he, he's kind of magical with the puck and uh, kind of that combination just, just allows uh, to get pucks to the net and, and score some goals. Guys, you've been part of national championship teams, but what does it mean to play in a game like this where your coach ties the all-time record? What does it mean to you? <laughs> so obviously, you can tell by his reaction that, um, you know, that obviously the, the record means nothing to him. And, and I think as a group last night, we were... Um, obviously disappointed with the loss, but more importantly disappointed that um, you know we couldn't do it for him. Um, you know we couldn't break the record for him or give us a chance to break the record for him at home. 
um, you know, in front of our crowd at, um, against BU. But, um, you know, for us, you know, at least for me, he's given me a great opportunity to play here and represent Boston College and wear maroon and gold. So um, I think a lot of the guys feel the, the exact same way. And, um, you know, I think it, it definitely was, um, you know, there, there was more of an incentive to, uh, you know, to play, play a little bit harder and, and make sure we, we got that win tonight. So, um, you know, on the weekend, I, I wish we could have done it at home and, and broken the record, but, um, you know, we got the tie. So, um, definitely happy for him. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an honor to be able to, to be a part of this experience and to play for Coach York here at BC. And uh, like Pat said, he, he won't talk about it. And he changed, he's obviously changed all the guys on the team's lives. And uh, to be able to give something back to him and get this record for him, for him is uh, something that we all really wanted to do. Bill, you've, you've had some big performances in big games recently, um, you know, back to the bean pot and all that, and tonight being a big game just for all kinds of different reasons. Are you kind of getting more and more comfortable with playing those sort of spotlight games where all the attention's on you a little bit? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily spotlight games. I, I mean, we talk about it a lot. The biggest game is the next game, and uh, we just try to, as a team, come out and, and work hard every game, and it um, doesn't matter who we're playing. Or, or what their record is, the next the next team we play is going to bring their best effort, so we have to make sure we bring ours. So, uh, yeah. Pat, um, um, earlier this week I was talking to Coach Kavanaugh about what Jerry brings to the table, and he said he thought his greatest strength was his ability to mold the team. So as captain, can you comment on that? And you know, bringing, obviously you guys get a lot of great players every year, but like Coach Kavanaugh said, a lot of programs got a lot of great players, and yet you guys have been able to really peg it, you know, a notch higher. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely think that's um, you know one of Coach's um, best attributes is, is the way he can he can bring a team together and and bring guys together. And I think um, you know first starts with, with the guys that he recruits, and um, you know like I've said before, there's there's a lot of guys on our team that that play fourth or third line duty that could be playing first line duty, um, you know, at a lot of other schools and they come here because, um, you know, they're willing to put the, um, the, you know, the notoriety on the back burner and, and, and play for a championship team and um, play for a team that, that's main goal is, is team first, you know, you know, me second. And so I think, um, you know, it starts with the recruiting process and once the guys get here, Coach York, make sure that, um, you know, everything um, that the team does, it, it's team first and, um, you know, there's there's no... Um, there's no place for um, for selfishness or or uh, me attitude at, at BC. It's it's everything you know for the team and, and for this university. Pat, has it been difficult to kind of manage the energy these last two nights with you know the extracurricular stuff on on the line with the record and all that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think you know we didn't really talk about it as as a team. Um, I think it was in the back of everyone's mind, um, but I, I think it was. You know, it's a, it's a typical BCBU series. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of emotion, a lot of excitement going into it. Um, great fans both nights. Um, you know, and and I think I think we did a good good job of. Um, obviously, we would have liked to have the sweep, but I think we did a good job of, of managing the emotions and um, you know and playing how we wanted to play. Bill, you guys have been struggling against BU on the power play up until very late last night. Uh, was there something you figured out about B's friends again, or was it mostly just fixing your power, fixing what you guys do? Um, I think, I mean, we watched tape, and I, we started off the year really strong in the power play, and we hit a little slump there. But uh, I think just sticking to what we do do best and uh, and bearing down on the chances that we had, we were able to uh, start scoring on the power play. And once you get one and, and you get that confidence back, and uh, you can start putting them in. Like tonight, I think we had, we had four, and uh, just got to keep it rolling from here. Anything else for the players, guys? Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, I think the power play, uh, like Billy said, it's, it's all about execution, you know, making the right plays, of, uh, uh, seeing the open person, and we, we have slumped a little bit on that, but BU was pretty good defensively last time. They kind of shut us down. On the, I think we had 
two power plays. The one was the kind of cut in half, but uh, that's going to be essential for our team. We've got to be sharp on power plays. Special teams are very important. So it's nice to see us take a, a jump forward like that. Jerry, similar question I asked Bill. He's become kind of a, a go-to guy for you guys in the, the big games, and obviously you play a lot of them. Do you know where that comes from? Have you seen that come from him that he's got just, more Yeah, he's just getting better and better. You know, he was a big part of the championship game his freshman year, and, you know, he's come right back, uh, you know, last year. And so he, he's been he's been a real key, key guy for us. But he is getting better and better. I think he's a little more comfortable. Uh, the more experience you have, the better you get at these, these type of games. Uh, but he's got a lot of good players with him that help him, so that's kind of nice. When you uh, reflect, think about the, the 924 wins, uh, and obviously a lot of people... A lot of losses, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you, a, a, lot lot of games. People, a lot of people contribute to those wins and losses along yeah. the way. Where do you find your mind going towards? The players that, that helped you get there, the coaches you kind of learned from uh, before you sort of became uh, the coach that you are now, friends, family, like which kind of people uh, do you reflect on when you, when you reach something like that? You know, I've tried to block everything out because uh, it's so important for us to stay in the moment. And uh, But sometimes when I, I, I get a chance to reflect back, it's, uh, I started pretty slow up at Clarkson. I thought, yeah, I might not stay in this profession, you know. And then Dave Taylor came to Clarkson and kind of changed everything around for me. And So I think more of the players, you know, we got a, Rob Blake to join us at Bowling Green and, you know, Brian Gionta here or, and a lot of, you know, Nathan Gerber, some really top-end guys. So I kind of reflect more on them. That's what I, uh, probably more back in the players that, because you know, it's all about good players that want to get better and, and play as part of a team. Have you heard from a lot of those guys? Yeah, they have been texting me and emailing me back and forth. Uh, even uh, my new Twitter account, they have to tweet me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Jocko, don't laugh now. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Jerry, we've talked about the captains that you've that you've had, especially here, yeah. um, and how important that's been to this to this whole run. You got a guy like Pat. Can you just talk about what how important it is to have a strong captain, especially you know these couple of weeks where there's you know so much going on. You need managers. Yeah, he's a terrific leader. You know, he follows. Uh, you know, he watched Tommy Cross last year, and you know uh, Tommy had watched Ben Smith. So we've been really fortunate that type of uh, because that's part of the process of winning hanging banners you need real strong leadership and uh, but he's just you know he's just grown so much in that department of leadership you know I didn't really see it in him early in his career but then probably late sophomore year and last year you could tell he's gonna be a captain for us but he does, does an outstanding job Jerry uh, Bill was talking about his unit getting the pucks in the net on the power play did you stress that with them going into this game? Because it seemed like they shot from absolutely. Yeah, we had to get more, uh, generate more shots. Because BU, you know, uh, they cut down passing lanes. And, you know, the hardest thing to defend is a shot and a rebound. Because you're not programmed to, you don't know where the puck's going to go. When it's going point to point to half wall, you've got a kind of rotation. But if you can get a shot off, and even a shot off the end boards, I thought like, the players were much better than that. And 5 on 3, we had some. You know, really hard shots before Matheson scored. So sometimes we get a little too, you know, we make a tic tac toe play and it's not there. Coach, last night it seemed Parker was really tested, um, but the D kept it relatively quiet there tonight. Can you talk about their play? Yeah, I think that they played better tonight. We, we were just smarter and, and harder to play against. Our, our, some of what I thought BU did to us at their building. Now, you know, home ice, the the crowds generate a lot of enthusiasm and emotion that reflects back on your team. So I thought BU had that last night from the generate a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, you know uh, enthusiasm, enthusiasm from the home crowd, and that helps your club. Uh, and I thought we had that tonight. So we we're just a, that much better. And part of it was that you're playing at home. You know, it's three miles apart, but it's a completely different. You see all the gold rather than all the scarlet. You know. Can you talk about Destry's status and what you thought of three guys who kind of filled in on that second one? Yeah, line? Destry's put us in a kind of a bind because he was, you know, that, that player for us and he's had a high ankle sprain and he probably are uh, early the new year. So mid January, early January might be back. But we've rotated through. I thought our Silky played well tonight. I thought 
Danny Linnell in a different line played better tonight, so uh, maybe uh, that helps Danny to play with Sid, you know, so sometimes that combination helps, but I thought Silk was good tonight. Even before you moved Silk up, I know he got some power play time last night. Uh, can you talk about what you've seen from him that well, he's still so a young guy, you know, and he's, he's 18 years old, he's, but he's kind of, he's kind of a big body, and, he, and if he learns to use that, that's the direction we're putting him toward, kind of a power forward. And I think it was, he's taking some strides there. Coach, sure. just, just before you left and, and, you know, waved to the fans, can you, can you give us a glimpse of what was going through your mind? Was it any different tonight, given the... Given the 920. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to talk about, you know, because the emotions are, are you know, and I, like I said, I think I've done a good job. We, we players never talk about it. And we always are, tell our players that if you put yourself above the team, are, good things are not going to happen, you know. So whether it's a coach thinking about, you know, personal records or a player thinking about All American or Hobie Baker, or, you, don't, you don't succeed very often. At least you don't win a lot. So I, I think I've been really good in that respect there. Uh, so the kids that, you know, they work hard. The rivalry certainly helped Brian because, you know, it's BU. It's not like we're playing somewhere we're, we're not conscious of. We're not, you know. So everything was pointed more toward this series. How about afterwards, though? Did you give yourself a second to enjoy it? Oh, yeah. It's just, you know, <laughs> been a long time. A lot of Zambonis, you know. <laughs> a lot of busts, you know. Johnny, I think, had a, a point per game streak coming into this one, and, and he had kind of a tougher game tonight, no points in a, in a couple of Three times. penalties. Yeah. Um, with, with that counts a, as a point of the three penalties. <laughs> uh, such a dynamic player. How do you keep him from getting frustrated when he has a night like this, oh, especially just, when he's young? Yeah, he, he doesn't. I don't think there's any problem with that. He's looking at, hey, we won the game. So that's what we're talking about as far as you know, there's no frustration with our players. And that's from leadership and just from the culture we have here, so he's ex extremely excited. He wants to count that assist at the end there. <laughs> What's that, guys? Great.